Hi, thank you so much for joining us. Um, I can see there's only a couple people at the moment, but last week and the week before people joined throughout. So we're going to start now and then we will also share the webinar so that people can watch it after if they couldn't make it on time. We're going to stop sharing our camera now and we're going to begin um, from meaningful marks to wonderful words. Thank you so much. Okay. So none of us are um, Kate Erica, and my name's Anastasia Fletcher, and I've been teaching for eight years in the early years in both London and Dubai, and I'm now in my third year in Hong Kong, and I'm Read, Write, Inc. trained, and that's what I'm most passionate about in teaching early years is, is phonics, and I really do love teaching it. It's such an amazing journey to be on with the children. Hi there, um, I'm Claire Cunningham and um, I've been in Hong Kong for two years now and it's my first international. I am back in the UK in Scotland. I, am, I was phonic, jolly phonics trained and I've now been reading using Read Right Inc. And I've also developed literacy programmes to help to close the gap um, for children who are EAL. So the outcomes for this session, hopefully, are that we can help people to understand a bit more about the importance of the mark making and early writing in the early years. We've covered already um, the importance of listening, the importance of the very, very early mark making. We're now progressing on to early writing and how to support children at the early stages of their writing journey, which is where our children are right now in reception. Um, and how important the environment is, which we talk about every time but this time about how important it is to support children with their early stages of writing. And talking about phase three and four phonics, we've covered phase one and two so far, and then some resources to support you at the end as well. So we created this map just to show what we believe phonics looks like um, as a journey from our perspective, from our experience. And we've talked already about the importance of listening to the environment, listening to sounds and oral blending. We've talked about learning those initial sounds. And um, so the first few sounds that children learn, um, the, the single sounds and the corresponding letters or what it looks like, what the sound t looks like is a letter T, for example. And we already, we, today we'll be talking more about mark making through using those sounds, trying to write words, and instilling confidence for children to write through play and as well as formal teaching. And we'll also talk about how children then apply that by themselves, the blending and segmenting of, of sounds. And then look, watching children sounding out and supporting them to sound out new words, as well as reading new words, and the importance of um, letting children do that without it telling them that spelling is wrong, because it's really important that they get lots of confidence in writing. At the very beginning, children are um, wonderful at mark making and it's about ensuring that they have that experience and opportunity throughout their day um, to have a go at making those beautiful scribbles that they see, the zigzag lines, and then moving on when they start teaching phonics, they start to move on to the letter formation and it's about allowing them to have a um, different experience um, using a different material for them to um, practice their letter formation or for writing their name and this all ties in really well to the characteristics of um, learning and the EYFS curriculum because the children are having the opportunity to play and explore and have the curiosity of writing words and um, mark making inside the classroom, outside the classroom. They're having a go, they're persevering, they're not giving up until they've actually formed it correctly. And the little boy at the top of um, the PowerPoint, he's really been practicing. He was one of the, the at the initial stage of like scribbling still, um, but able to talk about the marks that he'd made. And now since we've started phonics, we've really started to show that progression the interest and enthusiasm for um, writing those letters. So he's practicing on a whiteboard and um, also the little boy um, in the other picture, he is outside and he's making 
lots of lovely drawings. It was based on Halloween and he was able to use those words um, to communicate his story. Um, so he spoke about it first and then his beautiful pictures to illustrate what he was trying to get across there. So it's really important that the children have those foundations before they start um, the process of writing. The process of becoming a writer is one that takes um, place over time and we need to remember that every child is different and at different stages of the mark making process and one of the most important things is that children feel valued no matter what they put down on paper or in the sand that we acknowledge that and um, we give them the opportunity to talk about what they have written or what they have made. Um, and as early years practitioners, we can play a vital role in helping the children to take their first steps along the road to writing. And these are just some of the uh, opportunities that the children have when they are allowed to mark make. So we make sure that we have um, like, uh, paper or um, sand or glitter and lots of different areas of the classroom, both inside and outside, so that children can communicate their ideas in a variety of ways using lots of different materials. At the very beginning, the children need to strengthen up them, their um, fine motor skills and we do this through using Play-Doh. So after we have taught our phonic sounds, the children um, who are not ready to form those letters, they can start manipulating the Play-Doh and um, form the sounds of the day by making the letter shape. Uh, they can also have a go at using um, the glitter or rice also. They, some children who have sensory issues might want to use a pencil or a paintbrush to form those letters. It might just be even like zigzag shapes just now. I know that some of my children who are not quite ready, um, I use a really um, long piece of paper and they're using really chunky um, crayons just now. And it's more about that whole gro gross mo movement for them um, before they move on to the fine motor skills. Um, and I'm also allowing children who perhaps don't choose to write, um, I'm just thinking of some of the boys who are always in the construction area, um, putting notepads and little tool belts, um, post-it notes, anything just to give them that, that opportunity um, to uh, put marks onto paper. Also, um, what's worked well in my class for the um, children who are not ready for writing is maybe perhaps when you're doing um, a more a carpet session or a structured time that's adult led, they could um, perhaps have a, um, a picture of themselves and you can put it into a particular area of the classroom and then that way they know while you're doing something else they can have a go at um, making their marks. So we're just going to touch on um, pencil grip and control. Um, we've talked about this before, but we wanted just to mention again the importance of those fine motor supports in the environment. Because although some children might be ready to write and they're ready to make words, they're ready to put letters together, they still don't necessarily have the dexterity or the strength to write conventionally with a, with a pencil or a pen. So um, we support this by using those fine motor games that. Claire was mentioning Play-Doh and Peg Play and Lego and threading um, to really strengthen their hands. And this is just kind of um, the typical journey a child goes through with holding a pencil. And some children, even though it says one to one and a half years, are still doing the cylindrical grasp in my class now. And lots of children are still doing the digital grasp, even though it's meant to be two and three years old, roughly only a guide. And then we'd like children by now to be move, moving on to the, the third stage. So holding their pencil just for more support with writing those intricate letters rather than mark making or, or the, the scribbling. And then we would ideally like children to move on from reception 
with a secure tripod grasp. Obviously, as adults, we all write differently. We hold our pencil differently. It's not something they have to be doing, but we, we would prefer them to be holding it in that way just because it's easier to write for them. Um, and I'm just going to show you on the next slide. For those children in my class who aren't ready to write yet, I've just made them some phonics boards so that when we are learning how to segment words, so they can put words together um, and then to blend words, they can do it with sticky letters on some Velcro instead because they're not ready to write. But if they are ready, they can practice underneath. So then it includes everybody because those children who are then ready to start putting sounds together still can without the pressure of writing yet. So this has worked really well in my classroom so far. So children can now start writing um, without actually writing the letters, if that makes sense. As I mentioned before, it's about enabling all of the environments and particular outside. Um, I know that there's um, a few children who prefer to be outside, so it's giving them the chance to develop their coordination and the opportunity for mark making. Um, we try and use every surface outdoors to create um, mark making, so the paper could be vertical or horizontal, it can be in different areas of the um, outdoors. And for example, um, there could be pebbles on the grass for the children to have a go at perhaps making transient art pictures first before moving on to lighter shapes. And sticks in the sand pit, um, chalk on the tarmac so that they can have a go using different materials again. And not, it doesn't always have to be with a pencil because some children are just not at that stage. Um, in this tough spot here, we've used more natural ingredients. And again, that encourages children to use their curiosity and they want to come over and have a go. And if they don't see it as mark making, they would probably just see more, oh, I've painted something or I've used this tool to help me with the beautiful colours. So it's about helping the children who are emergent mark makers not to feel that stress of holding up a pencil because they're not quite ready. So it's trying to be really creative here and so that the children feel really inspired and it's still really um, fun for them and um, they're wanting to have a go. Using different colours and types of paper also helps to influence the children's choice of where they will spend time and where they will mark make. Um, it's about just offering those opportunities for mark making to help them to understand that we value what they've made and that they can speak about it. And no matter, because all children want to be listened to and we're all at different stages. So it's just about making sure that those children who are not quite ready for writing still feel um, valued and that we take an interest in what they're doing. And here in my class, this is last week, this was um, just a, a wonderful moment where the children have used um, their sounds. So they've come in and they've moved away. You can see the first picture there that um, this boy, uh, you know, attention to detail, um, just so much um, in his picture. And then before he would just like to illustrate and draw, and then I said, oh, can you have a go at writing something about your picture? So he went away and he used a sound mat to help him and came back and said, oh, the pumpkin is orange. Mm -hmm. I said, that's wonderful, you have described that really well. And um, I'm so glad that you had a go and you used your signs um, that you know and your sign mat to help you. So he was really proud of himself. You can see that the other boy in the middle, he has really enjoyed um, make, creating his own um, spell book. He has drawn illustrations. And that week we were practicing um, the sounds um, we had um, P and T, so he was able to put that into his sound book and he was showing me all the fabulous marks that he'd made and the letters too. At the very front of that page he'd drawn a spider and labelled it with a 
So that was really good. And you can see that the letter formation, this little girl um, is wanting to make sure that all her letters are facing the correct way. And she's really trying her best to concentrate. I, I got her to trace over the letters. These are from Regi Inc. And she has drawn um, so many different um, spooky um, images from haunted house to the webs, to the spiders, to the cauldron. She wanted to have a go at putting the initial sound to each of her joints. So again, all the children at different stages and it's just making sure that we meet those individual needs and interests so that that motivation just keeps growing. So um, in the, the blue highlighted section is the ELG, so the early learning goal from the, the British curriculum that we use called Development Matters. And um, so it states that when children leave our reception class, or when they've got to 40 to 60 months, the, the next step, the ELG, would be to use their phonic knowledge to write words in ways that match their spoken sounds. Also writing some um, tricky words and writing sentences which can be read by themselves and, and others and some words are spelled correctly and some are just phonetically plausible. So um, the most important bit of this um, for us is that the, the matching the spoken sounds is the key sentence. So children are using their sounds to write words that, that look like how they sound to them. And that's absolutely fine for us. So usually early years teachers are quite good at reading that early writing. And if the children can read their writing back themselves as well, then they have achieved the early learning goal as far as we are concerned. Um, there's, there's nothing about finger spaces or caps rest or full stops, but we do teach, teach them, and I'll talk about that a bit more later. But the, so the ELG is to write words and sentences which are, can be read by themselves and others. And we, we can usually decipher what they're writing by the end of the year. Um, we also want children to leave reception with a confidence in writing and a love for writing, as well as enjoying what they write about, um, because that's also an important thing Like Claire has talked about using their interests, giving them something they actually want to write about, there's something that means something to them. Children often start writing things um, like letters to mummy and daddy and, and cards to mums and daddies at home as their first thing, don't they? Yeah. You get that a lot, because that means something to them a lot at the moment, and we also get 10 or 20 letters a day um, but that again that's meaningful to them so giving them that interest and that passion to, for writing is what we, we intend to do with them every day um, and they'll also learn how to blend and segment for reading and writing the words we've talked about before so blending is putting the sounds in in a word in order to read it so that's the, the reading part and then the segmenting is breaking a word into the sounds in order to spell a word um, and again, that's spelt however they think it might be, even if it's not seen as correct by an adult. So at this stage after phase two, which we're almost at the end of, some children are ready to write meaningful sentences. Um, some children show a huge interest in writing and are constantly writing during play and during assessment, which we'll go into next time. You might notice that some children are able to form sentences or they're beginning to put words together already by themselves. Some children come to us as writers because they've done lots of writing at home. Um, and so I've been helping those children that are ready to write by playing things like mixed up sentences games. So giving them words on cards, which are jumbled up, and then they have to put it together to make a sentence, to give them a bit of a challenge. And then I ask them to make a sentence from it, which makes sense. So they might try the words a few times around, see, see when it makes sense, and then put the full stop at the end. Then they then copy that into their books and they understand that there's a gap between each word and a full stop at the end. So I'm introducing them to sentences now because we're trying to challenge, we're always challenging those children that need, need, need to be pushed a bit further. And then they might write their own sentence as well by changing one of the words. So you might write, the sun is hot. So they change their own word and then, then they are then creating their own new sentence just by changing one word. Um, so red, the reason some of them are red is because it's a tricky word, um, which is a word you cannot blend, it doesn't make sense. Um, and the green words are words you can blend and they can be read um, by saying each sound like an, pan. Um, Kung Fu punctuation is just to remind them about capital letters and full stops. Um, so we always say uh, the full stop at the end is like a Kung Fu sort of punch. <laughs> Um, and it's really important that you listen to and observe the children's interests so they have something to write about that's fun. For example, 
animals or trains or cars or lots of things that children want to want to actually write down and you can even use these things to make a sentence like I've done here but you could put words on a car you could put words on bricks they have to build the words if they like building and then we always make sure we're closing that gap and supporting the children that aren't yet ready to write as well by making sure there's provision for everyone in the classroom whatever stage they're at so there are children who aren't yet interested in writing a sentence but they're interested in writing sounds or words and they can access all different um, levels of writing in, in all of our classrooms. So as well as it being a teacher and a TLA in each classroom, we always say the environment is our third teacher. And, and now that children are ready to write words and sentences, it's important to have access to writing all over the classroom. So like Claire said earlier, having somewhere they can mark make in every area. So it's that we don't just have a writing corner where children go and write, instead there's writing everywhere. Um, so children need to have that purpose and role play is a really lovely way to encourage children to write. They like writing things like lists and doctor's notes and vet notes for the animals, things they've seen in, in real life. So in this few of these pictures, a little boy here is actually uh, writing a, drawing a potion. Um, we did potions last week, but they're still enjoying potions, even though it's now not, not Halloween. <laughs> they're still really enjoying writing that. So he's drawn a potion with a pencil and he's trying to write the word pencil, which is a fact front P. Um, and then the little girl in the middle was playing teachers. So we just had a phonics lesson and she wanted to then use the sound cards to be the teacher and, and um, challenge her friends to write words. And there's a couple of children using the writing areas of the classroom. It's not actually the writing area. There are just, there's writing available all around the classroom for them. So even if there's a little corner somewhere, we'll make sure there's writing available to sort of give them a little space just to have a bit of time to try a word or have a look at a picture and try and write it. And then again, different medium to write in, such as the glitter there. And I've discovered this little boy could write whilst he's whilst he writing in the glitter. <laughs> so you find them writing in all sorts of areas, don't you? Which is lovely to see. Oh, and here's an example of um, a little boy who had written something from the role play area. Um, I don't know if anyone can read it. Um, it did actually take me a while, but in the end I got there. <laughs> so he has written that he wants a packet of tablets and medicine and a can of medicine and this is all so again he's used lots of sounds there there there's only really the word and is spelt correctly and can and of and this done very well actually but lots of the words aren't spelt correctly but it makes absolute sense this boy has used his sounds and it's an amazing sentence with full stop so this is absolutely elg absolutely the early learning goal has been achieved here even though there are words that aren't quite right and there's no capital letters, it's absolutely fine. Um, he's using his experience and using words and phrases he's used before, which makes it easier. And we're going to talk about talk for writing next as well. Um, and again, this is an area of the classroom that had mark making and he chose to mark make in the role play. So we've covered um, phase one phonics, which was the listening and how important that is. Um, to develop the children's listening skills moving on to phase two and phase two is our initial sounds and phase three is um, introduced to the children and it's usually taught for about 12 weeks. It's slightly more difficult um, because it covers the less common um, used phonemes. Um, there's around 25 of these and some of them, these are, are diagraphs um, such as ch R and E, and we need these sounds to be able to read and form useful words. Um, alongside this, the children are taught to recognise some more of their tricky words, um, including me, was, my, you and they, and these occur um, frequently in their reading books. So it's important that we are teaching the tricky words as well as the diagraphs and the trigraphs. Diagraph having two um, sounds together to make the one sound, or two letters together to make the one sound, and trigraph with the three sounds um, put together that just makes one. And so the children then, once they have this knowledge, are able to segment 
their words and create um, CVC words and CVVC words. Um, and then you can see them actually using wow words when they're expanding their writing. And that's lovely to see. So that's for the children who have got those wonderful imaginations, who have got a passion for reading, who have got so much to say that they can then start to access the phase three phonics and put that into their writing. So it usually takes about 12 weeks and by the end of it, the, you can start to see most children accessing their phase two and their phase three and beginning to write those words much more independently. And moving on from that, once um, children have been taught phase three, then going on to phase four. And we usually stream the children um, into ability groups so that those children are being really challenged I am the ones that are able to cope with the phase three and they're ready for the phase four and by now the children should be really confident at this stage and they are able to consolidate their previous knowledge and again learn some more tricky words and also have a look at um, the blends so a blend would be, for example, the B and R same er, and the, um, for example, words could be CVC words like bump and nest. So they're having to use um, their knowledge of the phase four um, to read all of those words. Again, it goes alongside their reading and their writing, um, the spelling, and um, the children are able to um, access everything that they've learned from phase two and it's just that continuous progression for them and you really see it coming together because at this stage the children are starting to write independently in sentences and they're um, using their knowledge of these planes and segmenting and writing all of these words and again it's about children having a go and not to be scared um, write down the sounds that they can hear because we can guess really what they have written um, without them having the correct spelling all the time. And as Star said before, it's um, when the children are using their tricky words, they'll probably be displayed around the classroom for the children to access. If you put them on Velcro, uh, the children can actually take it off um, and use that when they're writing. And also, um, before they might be a different colour, so that they know that that's a tricky word, because that's the word that they cannot sound out. Okay, I'm going to try and show a video now. Um, it's of me just uh, talking to parents. It was during virtual school when we were in lockdown. So it was, I was trying to help parents to understand how to teach their children at home, because obviously it's quite a tricky concept for lots of parents that the phonics is a really new thing for them. So I'm just going to show you how I was explaining um, the, how okay it is for children to not necessarily spell perfectly every time and as long as there are lots of words they can read and understand and that's what we're going for now let's bear with me sorry which way am i going for a video okay this one so we as teachers totally understand the frustrations you feel at home as parents watching your children writing and the words don't look correct because they're using the wrong spellings and they're using sounds that may not look right, but to those children, they sound right. And we try and encourage this from the early years into year one, where they will find out the correct spellings in their primary journey. But for this age, we like to let the children experiment with sounds and to write the way they think the words sound, even if it looks wrong. There are only some words that we will correct all the time, and those are high frequency words. So words such as in, at, on, up, mum, dad, those words they use a lot and they should be written correctly every time. And also the tricky words, we try and encourage them to learn those. So for example, the words like the, go, no, he, she, I, and those are the words we would correct at this stage. But there are lots of words we wouldn't correct and we would let them spell them the way they can hear it. And even though it looks wrong, we let them build up their confidence in the way that they can hear sound, sounds in words and let them experiment with the words. So let me show you what a typical reception or year one story might look like at this stage. And I've seen it written this way many times. So uh, I'd say that most reception and year one teachers could read this. 
So I'm going to read it through with you. Once upon a time, there was a pretty princess and she lived in a big castle. The princess had a shiny crown and she had a blue dress. The princess saw a frog and it turned into a prince. The end. Now, I'm sorry it's not a very exciting story. I'm just going to go through it with you and show you the kind of things you would correct and the things you wouldn't correct. So first of all, I'm going to use a green pen and show you the things we would leave and we wouldn't uh, correct right now because we want the children to just have the confidence with those words and to have an experimental time with those words, seeing what they might look like. And again, they'll learn those correct spellings in their future primary years. So I would probably leave, for now I'd leave the word once, unless children really understand because the word once is obviously a very tricky word. There's no work in there. <laughs> There's no S in there. So it's a really strange word. So I, I would leave once unless you think children are ready. So that I think is okay. I would leave that once. Time. So this child has used the I sound, the trigraph I, and I would correct that again if they know that there is the split digraph for time, which goes like that. I would correct it if they know that digraph, or I would tell them about that di the split digraph. Otherwise, I'd leave that because they've tried really hard to use their sound, I. There was. Was is a tricky word. I'll come back to that. A pretty, pretty I would leave. They've really tried hard to use the, the Y sound at the end. It's fine, they've used an I sound. Okay, and I'm sure you, you get where that's going. <laughs> um, yes, so it's just a tricky thing for parents to understand um, a lot of the time that they don't need to be correcting their child's every word because it looks wrong and that it's okay to leave it just to really help that confidence in their children. And Stars had said earlier about using and tapping into the children's interests. So for this little boy, he loves space and he's an EEL boy um, and who's on the spectrum. And he is obsessed by space. So I thought if I get a sticker, I wonder what he's capable of. And so I asked him to uh, write about this. And so he came back and he wrote this independently and um, I was able to, to read this um, and he was able to um, read it out to me as well. And I was, couldn't believe, I've never really seen him mark making before, but just to have that moment where it was just a wonderful moment um, where he was able to showcase what he could actually do. So, we use stickers, it could be like princess dinosaurs, on the A4 labels, or dress labels, and leave them around the classroom, and the children, can, they love to get them, stick them onto paper, and, stick to, and make their own books, and they can, again, they could just label it with the initial sound, or they can start to have a go um, at writing sentences. Um, I'll hear a few children from my class last year as well, who um, have written to Father Christmas, who have used those stickers like Claire was talking about. I think someone here actually cut the teddy bear out and stuck it into a little book we are making. And someone who's just drawn a, a picture of them opening a present, I think. This is a dog. So the first one is just um, Letter to Santa that I haven't helped with at all. So the, I think the key here is that we don't help the children mm -hmm. to do this. We're not sat over them, telling them what to do, telling them the sound. Um, or making them feel like it's wrong or, or really pressurised. These children have done lots of this totally independently and they were only just four in reception. So it shows that confidence and that they are already getting really early on. So the first one it says, I think it's this, please can I have an Elsa dress? So the B is back to front, that happens. Sorry, the D is back to front, it's like a B. That happens a lot, but I, I think I'd left that because she thought it was a d -d -d sound. Um, and that's, that's, an, that's an amazing sentence for, for a child at Christmas time to be writing in reception. Then this book, uh, I think this was a child that had never written anything before. Me and my, my TLA were so happy about this, writing Teddy Bear by themselves. And then this other child on the end slipped done lovely finger spaces, and I think even a full stop in there. They're starting to then write a sentence, this is a dog. They wouldn't have learned the th sound yet. So like we touched on last week, 
they've used the other sound they know and they thought it sounds like dis. So that's absolutely fine. They don't know TH makes the yet. So dis is a dog is like Claire talked about earlier, giving them that massive ability to communicate, to write down things that they want to show people. It just, they, they start to be able to show you so many amazing things when they start writing sentences by themselves. Um, this was a wow moment yesterday for us. Um, so the little girl has come in and she, on her way to school, had collected two grasshoppers. So the children right away, their interest, curiosity, it was just wonderful to see. So um, we do teach a lot of children with English as an additional language. And just to get the children to be able to talk and to look and describe what they could see. So there was two grasshoppers. Um, a, brown one and a green one, uh, different shape, uh, different sizes, and um, the children spent a long time really observing and um, were talking about it with each other. There was a buzz about the classroom. It was lovely to see. And then one of the little boys uh, decided he wanted to draw, draw the grasshopper. He said, I can't do it. So we have um, one of the big, um, toy resources which is a grasshopper and I said why don't you have a look at that and he's very good at copying shapes and so he started to begin his, his drawing and then what he wanted to do after it he wanted to apply um, a sentence to that and you can see what he's doing with his fingers and I think I've only modelled this a few times when I've been doing a sentence for my higher ability phonics group. He's um, using his fingers to show that uh, finger space and um, this went on for the full morning. I could hear the children um, talking about the grasshoppers and some of them, I put on a song about a grasshopper, they were doing movements, um, it was in their role plays, um, they were talking about the long legs, uh, they were trying to meet their bodies, make the same actions, it was just it was lovely to see. Um, so talk for writing is really important at this stage, for children have to be able to communicate using their words, sharing their stories, sharing their ideas with one another before they can actually write anything down. And we will talk about this um, talk writing um, again and the importance of that. Um, the children have made like a spell together and it was modelled by the teacher and put things into a potion and all of the children, again, it's about creating that hook and that excitement. So it can be just done organically by something that a child brings in. We've had snails before. Um, lots of just different interests that the children bring in and your lessons out of the way or your idea because that takes over um, and so it's important that you just capture those little moments and um, what I also like to do is um, for my children my EL ones particularly is give them the opportunity to tell me a story so it might just be based about their interests it might be one that they've heard and I scribe for them. So they're telling me the story, who's in their story, where the story might take place, what happens, is there a problem? And I scribe that for the children and then they can draw their picture to match what they've told me. So that's a really good um, way to go forward in the early years, supporting all of the communication um, within your class before the children are, are ready, because they need to have those ideas, thought process first, so that they've got that excitement for writing. Um, and I think the next slide, yes, this mm. is the fi finish article and um, this was just wonderful. So he had a go, he loves reading, so he knows the word the, and he's just sounded out grasshopper. Um, mm. And you can see is, um, he's spelling it as he sounds it, green, because he's not had the digraph E. Um, it can, and we were thinking hip hop. <laughs> so um, I was really, really proud. This was a lovely moment yesterday. So if you can tap into the children's interest as a hook into the writing, it just gets so many children on board. Amazing. So uh, we're near, near the end now. We just thought we'd talk about phonics and reading um, because reading is a huge part of phonics as well. 
Um, so we do have start on um, Oxford reading books in our school um, and this goes in order of uh, colour bands so the children start off with a book with just pictures and no words and then it builds uh, as the, the children get confidence with reading so that then the pink ones would have a few words in that they can sound out and the red books would have some more trickier words. Um, so the storytelling is a really important part of reading, just as Claire has talked about with her um, children that are learning English as an additional language. The ability to talk first is really, really important in a stage you can't miss out of reading. So we usually send home, first of all, uh, what we call the lilac books, just because that's the colour band, and that they have no words in, so sometimes the children are a bit confused and so are the parents, but we do try and really emphasise the importance of the storytelling that children can say the words and think of new words and describe things before they need to necessarily read words themselves because then using the pictures will really help when they get to using words it will help to, them to work out what the word says and also it gives them ideas for writing so they work together being able to read doesn't necessarily mean you can write but if you can then reading gives you all of those amazing ideas just as Claire said about the little boy before who reads a lot he knew what the word the looked like because he reads lots of books and then it's really important that when children do start reading that it's not just about reading words it's about understanding what they've read so lots of questioning about what happened and why and what did this character do and what could happen next and we'll talk about more about reading next time and and then as i've said the storytelling enables children to get ideas for their writing and then they'll start to read more things like words and phrases in the environment. And it's really lovely to, um, to see them, the children using their phonics for reading as well. So I think my next slide is a video of a little girl reading um, her lilac book. So there are no words, but she's really going for it and telling the story amazingly. The bird. The daddy, the daddy and mommy and sister and brother go to somewhere and and buy some food for the uh the ducks and birds from the old, from the old man the brother and sister are feeding the ducks and birds and some of them can swim and some of them can't swim this can uh this can swim also this and this can swim in the water so she was just using really amazing sentences and putting words together structuring sentences by herself without reading actual words which is going to really help her when she does come to use um, her sounds to blend words together reading a book that has those, those words in. These are just some of the resources that we do use and we've used this from phase one all the way through to phase four, phase six. Um, so um, they are useful. We've got the Read Right Inc. That's where it's the letter formation and the letters and sounds that might give you the structure to the order that the sounds are taught. Jolly Phonics, again, it's more of a multi-sensory approach and using the actions. And Phonics Play is really good in terms of it's got um, nonsense and alien words where the children have to really decode the words using the skills they have learned and the sounds that they know um, to see whether it's a real word or a made-up word. Um, and they really like to do that and it's, um, it's a really good resource for consolidation. So just briefly to conclude then, it's just about the important stage of mark making, getting the children's interest. All marks are really important, they should be valued. It's about building up their confidence, that is crucial because it's about 
that self-worth and what you've done is so important. I'm so proud of you. And then you can see that natural um, progression with each and every child. Children are at all different stages and it's just about giving them that time to develop as writers. Um, writing is such um, an important tool. It's a life tool and it really empowers their children to be able to communicate. Um, this is just the start of their journey, so it's got to be fun, positive and uh, supportive without adding, as Star said, any type of pressure. Just some children are just not ready yet, but perhaps using a book or a story time where you can scout for those children. A lot of them um, children can tell you a wonderful story, but they don't want to put any marks on paper. So for them to tell you orally, that's a really important step um, as well. And then talking and reading is also all complements one another and it's all part of the journey. Okay, so next session, um, we will talk a bit more about um, what happens beyond phase phase four. Um, so as well as it being phase five, it's also more about talk for writing, so helping those children who are now writers to write stories and to, to write their own versions of stories that they already know and how we do that with them. About shared writing, so um, writing together as a class, so giving each other ideas and feeding ideas into a new piece of writing together, talking about how to improve your own writing, how to make it um, another step on and progression from the early writing. Intervention, so what we do if children aren't necessarily um, progressing with, with writing, if they're not enjoying writing, how, it, how we um, hook them in when they get to sort of past reception into year one, and what we do if they're not sure how to still write certain words and things, and how important it is to write for a purpose still. Beyond, beyond the reception years. And then we will talk a bit more about the phase five phonics, so when they're, they're learning some of those, um, those skills beyond what we've talked about so far. And that's it for now. Yeah. Does anyone have any questions they want to type or they want to say out loud or anything they'd like to add? Anything you don't agree with? <laughs> We're happy to hear any kind of feedback. Um, and if not, then we'll go on to our last slide, which is asking for any feedback. That you have to give. So I think you can either scan this or go on to the website below. So that's it from us. So thank you very much for listening and we and Kate Erica who is the host and who has developed these webinars will be sharing the recording from today. Okay so thank you so much for thank listening. You. Thanks for <laughs> have a good time. evening or day or morning wherever you are and hopefully see you next time. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. 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 Bye.